taking input tax credit in respect of inputs and capital goods sent for job work what are all the content should be there in tax invoice what are the information should be there in tax invoice that we are going to study under tax invoice chapter first unit it is very important they will be asking questions for 30 marks and you have to give high priority hello everyone I am Mr. Arun Kumar, lecturer from Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. Dear students, I welcome you all to this introduction session for the subject Indirect Taxes 2, which is there for 6th semester BCom students. So, Indirect Taxes 2 deals with like GST and Customs Duty. So, yes, dear students, this subject is consisting of 6 units. Unit 1 deals with value of taxable supply value of taxable supply is nothing but how to compute the value of a supply supply is nothing but purchase if you are purchasing any product how they are going to compute the value of that product so we are going to learn the total value of taxable supply in unit one and in unit two we are going to study about input tax credit so input tax credit is nothing but a manufacturer is going to purchase the raw materials in order to manufacture a product so at the time of purchasing the raw material, the manufacturer is going to pay the tax on raw material. Okay, The manufacturer is going to pay tax on raw material. But the manufacturer is not liable to pay the tax. But at the time of purchasing raw material, he is going to pay the tax. Later on, he is going to claim the tax with the GST authority. So unit 2 deals with input tax credit where the manufacturer is going to claim whatever the tax he paid at the time of purchasing the inputs to manufacture a product or to distribute a service. And unit 3, it is all about tax invoice with reference to GST. So tax invoice in an easy way we can say receipt or a bill. A bill will be consisting of uh, the details of a seller, details of a buyer and what is the cost of the product? What is the tax he is supposed to pay on that product? Every details will be there invoice. That is called tax invoice. So with reference to GST, they have a set of rules and regulations in order to generate a tax invoice. So that we are going to study under unit number 3. And unit 4, it deals with registration under GST. So yes, if you want to be a legal seller, if you want to be a legal supplier, first you have to register under the GST Act. So what is the procedure to register under the GST Act? And what are the types of registration we have? What are the documents we are supposed to submit to register under GST? This all aspects you are going to study under registration under GST in unit number 4. And unit 5, it deals with returns. Returns is nothing but different set of forms we have under GST. So which form is applicable on what kind of transaction? Suppose if you are purchasing the materials, which form you are supposed to fill and claim with the GST authority? If you are selling any product, which form, whether it is GSTR1, GSTR2 or GSTR3, we have different forms of forms. So which form is applicable on what kind of transaction? So we are going to study about that in unit number 5, that is in returns chapter. And unit 6, it is fully deals with Customs Act 1992. It is also called customs duty. Okay, so customs duty is applicable on imports and exports. So, what are the different kinds of transactions we have under customs duty? What are the different types of taxes we have under customs duty? And what are the conditions in order to impose customs duty? And on what kind of you know uh, products the customs duty is applicable? So, we are going to learn about this under unit six, that is customs act. So, mainly. In this subject, the first five units deals with GST. So the first five units deals with GST and the last unit that is Customs Act, it deals with customs aspects that is uh, the tax applicable on imports and exports. Yes, if we go in depth about each unit, so unit one value of taxable supply. So in that we are going to study about conditions. So what are the conditions we have 
to compute the value of taxable supply. What are the conditions or the rules and regulations we are supposed to fulfill to calculate the value of taxable supply. And we also study supply between two related persons. If the supply is made between two related persons, between two brothers or between a brother and sister, between a father and son, if the supply is happening between two related parties, between two friends, then how we are supposed to compute the value of taxable supply that we are going to study and supply through agent. If the supply is happening through agent, how we are going to treat it? On what way we are going to compute the value of taxable supply in case if the supply is made through agent and cost based value. Yes, if the product is valued based on its cost, then on those kind of transactions, how we are going to calculate the value of supply that we are going to study and service of pure agent. Service of pure agent is nothing but an agent will be there, he will be providing the services. So on those kind of services, how we are going to calculate the value of supply. And next, problems on determination of value of supply. Yes, in this chapter, we also have practical aspects where we will be computing the value of taxable supply. So if the transaction is happening between two related parties, how we are supposed to compute? If the transaction is happening between unrelated parties, if the transaction is happening through pure agent, how we are going to compute? So we are going to solve few problems based on different situations. Yes, moving on to the second unit, input tax credit. Here we are going to study the meaning of input tax credit, conditions for taking credit. It's nothing but what are the conditions we are supposed to fulfill? What are the rules and regulations we are supposed to fulfill in order to take this input tax credit benefit? And ineligible input tax credit, what are all the ineligible transactions we have? What are all the transactions which were not comes under input tax credit that we are going to study? Next, availability of credit in special circumstances. In some special circumstances, how the authority will provide the input tax credit. Sometimes in special case of transactions, the authority will provide, even though if it will not come under the input tax credit purview, they provide input tax credit benefit. So that we are going to study and taking input tax credit in respect of inputs and capital goods sent for job work. Sometimes the manufacturer will be you know, uh, giving the goods or transferring the goods to the job worker for the improvement of the goods. At that time, what will be the treatment under input tax credit system that we are going to study and manner of distribution of credit by input service distributor. So there will be a distributor, he will be distributing the you know services to different small distributors. So how he is going to distribute the input tax credit to his small service distributors that we are going to study under unit 2 and in unit 3 we are going to study about tax invoice. So tax invoice here we are going to study about credit and debit notes. So credit and debit notes is nothing but credit, crediting the amount to someone's account, debit, debiting the amount from someone's account, right. So in what situations we are going to debit or credit the amount to the customer's account. We are going to study that in tax invoice unit. And we are also going to study about tax invoice. That means what are all the content should be there in tax invoice? What are the information should be there in tax invoice? That we are going to study under tax invoice chapter. And we also study prohibition of unauthorized collection of tax. Sometimes without issuing a proper tax invoice, the manufacturer or the supplier will be collecting the tax, right? So with respect to that, we are going to study in this particular chapter. And we are also going to study about amount of tax to be indicated in tax invoice and other documents. Yes, so what is the percentage of tax should be indicated on the tax invoice? Whether it should be 5% or 12% or 18% or 28%. So the tax rate, the tax rate will be decided based on the product, right? If some product attracts 5%, then 5% of tax is applicable. If the product attracts 12% of tax, then the applicable tax rate is 12%. So that we are going to study under tax invoice chapter. Next, moving on to the next unit, unit 4, registration under 
GST. Yes, in this chapter, we are going to study about persons liable for registration. Who are all the persons are supposed to register under the GST Act that we are going to study and types of registration. So we have different types of registrations like compulsory registration and voluntary registration, so on. So what are the types of registration we have under registration under GST and procedure for registration. So what are the procedures we are supposed to follow to get registered under the GST purview that we are going to study under registration under GST this chapter and also we are going to study about rejection of applications for registration. In what circumstances the authority is going to reject the re applications that we are going to study and cancellation of registration. Yes, in what circumstances, in what scenarios the authority is going to cancel the registration of a particular supplier that also we are going to study under this particular unit. Moving on to the next unit that is unit 5. This particular chapter that is returns. This chapter deals with the brief introduction to various GSTRs. Various GSTRs is nothing but various forms which comes under GST. Like GSTR 1 we have, GSTR 2, GSTR 3, GSTR 4, GSTR 5. We have different types of forms under GST. So which kind of a form is applicable on what kind of transaction? Suppose if you are purchasing, if you are purchasing, see the goods is coming in, in under which form you are supposed to claim. In case if you are selling, the goods are going out, which form you are supposed to claim, whether it's a GSTR1 or GSTR2. So for different types of scenarios, we have different types of forms. So about that, we are going to study in this unit and procedure for filling various returns. Yes, we have to follow some systematic procedures. Right. So by following the systematic procedures, we are going to fill the different forms. So that you are going to learn under this unit. In unit 6, you are going to study about Customs Act 1962. Yes, this is the very, very important chapter if it comes to examination point of view. Yes, from this chapter, you will be getting nearly 35 to 40 marks questions. Like they will be asking question for 20 marks, for 10 marks as well as for 5 marks also. So this is very much important chapter in this subject. So here you are going to learn about meaning of customs duty. So what customs duty really means that you are going to study and prohibition of importation and exportation under section 11. See some goods are prohibited for importing or for exporting. What is the reason why they are prohibited some goods from importation and exportation that we are going to study. and Types of customs duties, we have different types of customs duties like basic custom duty we have, additional custom duty we have, next social and welfare surcharge we have and compensation cess we have, anti-dumping duty we have. So we have different varieties of customs duties. So we are going to study about different types of customs duties in this chapter and Computation of assessable value and applicable duties. Yes, computation of assessable value is nothing but if you are importing any goods, you are supposed to compute the value of that goods and applicable duty on the value of the goods that we are going to learn in this unit and exports. Yes, what is exports? What is the meaning of exports? And which are all the goods, uh, you know, attracts zero rated tax under exports, this and all. We are going to study in this particular unit. So unit 6 is very very important from the viewpoint of examination where you will be getting 35 to 40 marks question to only from this unit, from this sixth unit. Moving on to the question paper pattern, here we have three parts, part A, part B and part C. So part A, they will be asking four questions, each question carries five marks. They will be asking questions totally for 20 marks in part A. In part B, they will be asking 3 questions. Each question carries 10 marks. So they will be asking 3 questions. Each question carries 10 marks. They will be asking totally for 30 marks in part B. And in part C, so in part C, they will be asking 2 questions. 
for 15 marks each. So two questions, each question carries 15 marks. Totally they'll be asking for 30 marks. So part A, each question carries 5 marks. They'll be asking 4 questions, totally for 20 marks. Part B, they'll be asking 3 questions. Each question carries 10 marks, totally 30 marks. Part C, they'll be asking 2 questions. Each question carries 15 marks and totally for 30. Altogether, they'll be asking questions for 80 marks in your exam. Next, moving on to the blueprint of this particular subject, unit 1 that is value of taxable supply. Unit 1 value of taxable supply, the weightage for the unit, the weightage for the unit is 30 marks. They will be asking the questions nearly for 30 marks from this unit and you have to give high priority for this unit. First unit, it is very important. They will be asking questions for 30 marks and you have to give high priority. If you just concentrate this particular unit, you will be scoring 30 marks. Next moving on to the second unit, input tax credit. So from this unit, they will be asking 25 marks questions and you have to concentrate a bit on this unit. And unit 3, tax invoice, they will be asking questions for 15 marks and you also have to concentrate bit on this particular unit. The priority level is medium. And registration under GST, fourth unit. From this unit, they will be asking questions for 15 marks and the priority level is medium for unit 4. And unit 5, returns. In this chapter, they are going to ask questions for 10 mark and the priority level is low. Even if you are not going to study this particular chapter also, that's fine. You need to concentrate more on unit 5. Unit 6, Customs Act 1962, they will be asking questions for more than 35 marks only from this unit. So the priority level is high. Yes, if you study only this chapter, you can get past in your exam. You need not to study other 5 units. Right, so the priority level is high, they will be asking the questions for more than 35 marks from unit number 6 that is Customs Act 1962. Moving on, books for reference. So here, books for reference, the first book is Taxman Publications. So you can refer Taxman Publications for GST as well as for Customs Duty. And second one, Compendium on Goods and Service Tax, Dr. Manju, yes. So this book is also available in the market. You can purchase this and you can refer this book for GST as well as for customs duty. And also you can log into www.cbec.government.in. So in this website, you're going to get all the details with respect to GST and customs duty. This website is a government website where you are going to get all the informations, the two, the accurate informations with respect to the subject. Next one, Systematic Approach GST by Dr. Ravi Gupta and Dr. Girish Auja. Yes, from this particular book, you are going to get information about GST. And next, Goods and Services Tax, H.C. Mehrotra. In this particular book, you are going to get information about GST. And the next one, Customs Duty by H.C. Mehrotra. Yes, Customs Duty by H.C. Mehrotra. In this book, you are going to get all the details with respect to Customs Duty. So, these are all the books you can refer and you can get more information with respect to the subject. So, that's it with the information relating to the subject Indirect Taxes 2, which is there for 6th semester BCom students. And we'll be looking forward in the upcoming sessions. So, we meet you in the next session. Thank you all for watching.